Welcome back to Games and Thoughts. I'm Traxton. And I'm Michael. Today we'll be talking about objective versus subjective truth. I think this is really a fundamental area of where one starts to build the worldview up. And I'm curious as to what Michael thinks on this topic. So we'll be diving into that. Uh, do you have any opening thoughts, Michael? Um... I guess I would say that I like to keep uh, the objective like different from subjective thought because really? they are obviously very different. Um, I kind of believe uh, objectivity to be like like math and science, I guess, and subjectivity would be more like artistic type of things. Right. Where there isn't a definite answer. A definite answer to what? To, like, what is good art and so on and oh, so forth. Oh, right, right. So, I guess you would say that objective refers to things that are concrete and beyond emotional experience. Or yeah. beyond conscious experience. Yeah. Even, like, uh, color, or what we perceive as color, is just, like, electromagnetic waves. Like, color doesn't actually exist in the objective world. It's kind of just how we perceive it. Right. Yeah, that's interesting, because if you read someone like Plato, you know, he was arguing that redness was this objective reality that existed in this metaphysical realm. And that's really the only way you can get to making the subjective objective in that way. Hmm. So, I guess, but I think one issue you run into with this strict dichotomy is questions like, is there objective reality without the existence of any subjects? Like, could we even talk about an objective world that existed outside of something to experience it. Uh, that's one of those things that you just don't really have the answer to, I guess, because you can't <laughs> know for sure. Like, there isn't a way to know it. Um, however, we're just kind of forced to believe that the objective world exists without us. Right. There is that... I think I said this before, but there is that tiny possibility that we're all... Or not even everyone. Maybe I'm just crazy and hallucinating all of this. I don't know. Right. But that's a very tiny possibility. Right. So it's almost like a, a probabilistic kind of belief. Like yeah. you, you couldn't really get around in the world without it. Yeah, um, I guess. I do think we you might be able to analogize it to what we just said about redness, though. Like, redness? Like, we were just talking about how red doesn't exist outside of yeah. you know, color-perceiving objects. Mm -hmm. um, I do think there's you might be able to draw an analogy to the entire world with regard to conscious subjects like what would what would a rock be without something to experience it consciously yeah that just kind of falls back <laughs> to like we can't there isn't a way to know that we just kind of right. assume that it's a rock right well it's interesting. I've actually heard uh, there's someone named Donald Hoffman who I've listened to on a couple podcasts who actually argues that there is no 
like what we're talking about, there is no objective reality outside of the existence of subjects. And he actually uses game theory to argue that, evolutionary game theory. Basically, the claim is that it's more... It's more conducive to survival as a species to see the world in a way that's useful rather than true. Hmm. And I guess that's a lot to kind of digest all at once, but I think it's a very interesting road to go down because it kind of goes against our basic assumptions of the world. Yeah. Um... We just kind of assume the world exists because that's what we know, but I don't know. It could be that the objective world as we know it doesn't exist, but I don't know. Right. Well, even set aside questions as to whether it exists, because I do think that's kind of beyond anybody's scope. I think just even... To argue that it may exist radically different than we perceive it, I don't think is too far-fetched. Yeah, we're we're definitely limited in our uh, perception. Right. We only have the, the five senses, and that's... <laughs> it's enough to live. <laughs> right, it's, it's very... It's very good for the purposes of reproducing but yeah there's kind of there's kind of this scientific assumption that it's also good enough to completely understand space time you know yeah we i mean we seem to be the only species that exhibits that type of curiosity about the world too yeah i guess you might be able to see rudimentary forms of it and other animals I, I'm not familiar enough to say one way or the other um it's it's interesting with animals because I'm not really sure um I guess to relate this topic I'm not really sure how much uh, subjectivity animals feel or like if they can feel emotions um okay yeah that's interesting in that kind of way or if they are capable of conscious thought i guess right so i guess there's different levels of consciousness i'd say um I think what you might re- be referring to is self-consciousness, right? Like if if a dog is aware that it's a dog that exists, yeah, and that's... think of it thinks of itself in that context. Yeah, when something is self-aware, I guess I should have said. Right, and it's not it's not clear at all where that line is crossed either. Yeah, I guess. It's one of those things I don't... I'm not really sure. I guess you would have to analyze their brains more um, and compare it well, to a human's. Thing. Yeah, I mean, but we don't even... We can't even really pin down in the human brain what causes self-concept to come to be. So it would be doubly difficult to do it in animals. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we figure it out we'll compare and contrast (laughs) right well some i've seen some experiences uh like in various psychology courses where they'll put an animal in front of a mirror and like if the animal can understand that it's looking at itself then they take that to mean that it has a self-concept i think i heard about an experiment like that with pigs or something that showed that like pigs are really smart because like they could use I don't remember the experiment at all but it was something about pigs and they were using a mirror to find food oh yeah yeah I've I've read various things that talk about 
pig intelligence, which is surprising for some reason. But, but yeah, to go back to the mirror thing, I like I don't think that's sufficient for proving that something has a self concept in the way that we mean self concept. Yeah. Um, self-concept you kind of have to realize that you exist in not just an objective way I guess right because yeah I guess like those animals they can look in the mirror and they can kind of like see that that's them doing the things but do they have like actual thoughts about it or do they have feelings about it like well there i mean there's this urge to kind of map our own experience onto animals yeah that is true yeah and i think even this is probably a different conversation but i think our own self-concept is very incomplete and very illusory I think I think there's many parts of our self concept that's just flat out wrong like this this idea this idea that we're a subject riding around in our heads and we're the same subject that we were as a child it's just it doesn't make sense philosophically or scientifically like as you age and mature and grow and all that you like your personality changes and stuff so I guess in that way we're not the same subjectively. I guess you could say that we're always changing in that regard. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that everything about you changes. Mm-hmm. So what? A, there's nothing to hold on to to say that this is the thing that's kept me the same person since I was a young child. I guess I was going to say that, like objectively you have like the same organs and body and whatever else but you could make the really nitpicky argument that like your dead skin is always peeling off and <laughs> right whatever. yeah the the cellular argument mm-hmm. um yeah i think i just think it's easier to i mean we're the same we're the same process being carried out but I think it just it gets really messy and I think metaphysical in a way when you start claiming that there is this you that exists internal to the body or with the body itself yeah um that's kind of human nature a little bit we want to think that we're special yeah It may also come back to this original question about uh, the primacy of consciousness, though, that one way or another we feel that consciousness is integral to our experience of the world, so we kind of just push it to the forefront of everything. Mm. Yeah. It is pretty important, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's, I mean... By definition, it's the only important thing. This is this is something uh, Sam Harris talks about. Without consciousness, there's no there's no value in anything. Like there's no bad thing that can happen to a, a lifeless meteor. Hmm. Well, we're getting close to time here. Yeah, we are indeed. So, any last remarks? I guess. Um, not on the topic, no. I think it's a, I think it's an interesting topic we may have to revisit at some point. Yeah, um, I'm not sure that I have anything else to say. I think I kind of made my stance clear. (laughs) Alright, well, we will see you guys next time on Games and Thoughts. (laughs) 